Hello my friends and welcome to a new lesson inside the Guitar Elevation membership. Today we are going to tackle the subject of triads. Basically what are triads and why do we need to know about them? And how do we form them on guitar? Well basically if you've never heard about triads I'm going to explain that and if you've already heard about it I'm just going to give a brief explanation. Basically triads are chords. Okay, and like the name suggests, these chords are made out of three notes, three unique notes. Uh, basically on guitar, if I'm playing a major chord or a minor chord, G major, A minor, I'm basically playing a triad because these chords only have three unique notes. Now on guitar, the way I play them here in the uh, open chords, I'm duplicating some of those notes. But still, these are triads. Why do we need to learn about triads and how to form them on guitar uh, all over the fretboard. Well, basically because you are going to use them inside your improvisation and it will make your improvisation sound more professional uh, because it will help you target chord tones, basically card target the notes of the chord on which you are playing on at a specific time. Doing that also uh, helps you come up with arpeggio shapes on the fly and find your chords all over the fretboard without having to refer to a reference book. That's why we do that. All right. So now how do we form the triads? Let's consider uh, a major scale. Okay. So for example, the A major scale. Now I'm playing that scale on one string, but I could also do it on six strings, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. In order to form a major triad, therefore a major chord, what I need to do is pick the first note of that scale, pick the third note of that scale, this one, and pick the fifth note of that scale. So the first note, the third note, and the fifth note. These three notes, the 1, the 3, and the 5, form my triad. And the 1, 3, and 5 represent the degrees inside that scale. Okay? If it's good so far, great, we can move on. If it's not good, pause the video, review your major scale, and then listen to what I said. When we're playing the major scale, we're going to pick the first note, the third note, and the fifth note in order to form our major triad. Okay, let's move on. So I was playing the A major triad and my one is the A, the, th the three is the C sharp and the five is the E note. And basically if I put an A major chord here and I analyze the note I'm fretting, I get the E note, the A note and the C sharp note, the same notes. Now of course here on guitar they are uh, inverted, they don't come in order, but it's the same thing. Whenever I have those three notes combined together, I get an A major triad or an A chord. Good so far? I hope it is. Then let's move on. How do we form a minor triad? Well, you could either take the minor scale and do the same process. Take the first note, the third note, and the fifth note, or you could start with the major scale. So that's an A major. Take that third note and flatten it. Therefore, now you'll have the first note, the flat three, and the five. Therefore, A minor. And this is why when you play the A major chord, and you see it's only one note difference, one fret distance from the A major to the A minor. Because of that flat 3 happening here. So the, ma the main takeaway here is that in order to form a major triad, you take the scale of a specific key, you pick the first note, the third note, and the fifth note, and you get the major chord of that key. If you want to do a minor chord, you pick the first note, the flat three and the five. That's it. Now, if you forgot your major and minor scales, 
I would actually advise you to review them, but if you're too lazy, although you should review them, but I give you a way to uh, form triads. You could pick the first note and then go up four frets from here. One, two, three, four. You get the three and then go up three frets from this one and you get the five. One, two, three. That's how you do a major triad. So it's one plus four frets plus three frets. The minor one is one plus three frets plus four frets. Now that we've covered this, what I'm going to do is give you a bunch of chords and I want you to find me what are the notes that form uh, those chords, those major and minor chords. Uh, so basically what you would do is the following. Let's work on the G chord and then I'll, I'll let you do the rest. Uh, let's suppose I want to discover what are the notes that form the G major triad. What do we do? I start from the G note, any G note on a fretboard. Let's pick this one. So my one is G. Now I need to find my three and my five. So I play the scale. That's my three. And I try to identify the note. It's a B note. I keep going for five. And my five is the D note. Of course, you can do this scale or this scale to find your notes. You don't have to do it on one string. But when I lay, lay, lay it out like that, you actually get it better. All right, so basically my notes are G, B, D. Those are the notes that form the G major triad. Now, you are going to do uh, the rest of the chords, pause the video, do them, and only then, only then check out the answers with the PDF transcript I'm giving you. And by the way, do not try to look at the chords and try to guess what are the notes. Number one, they're they are generally not always in order. And number two, uh, it's called cheating. <laughs> okay. Basically, I want you to be able to do it on a pen and paper, but also on the guitar. All right. Now that we've discovered the formulas of the major triad and the minor triad, we are going to see how this applies on the fretboard. Uh, we want to form triads on the first three strings, okay? The first three strings on the guitar, the E string, the B string, and the G string. And we want to, to form the G major triad. So what we actually do in order to find those um, shapes is to pick any note of those three notes that form the G major triad, which are G, B, D. We pick any note and we start from there. So let's pick the G note and let's play it on the first string. That's my G note on the first string. Now I need to find the other notes on the B and the G string. So what is, uh, what are the other notes? It's uh, D and it's B. Well, basically I have a D just here above the G note on the third fret. Okay, so now I've found two notes. All I have left is the B note, and I'm gonna find it on the G string. It happens to be on fret number four. There you go, we've formed our first triad here. Okay, and if we want to find the other shapes, because we have three shapes for every triad, because we have three notes, I have to do the same process, but start with another note. Let's start with the B note here on fret 7 on the high E string. Okay, let's find one of the other notes on the B string that is close to my finger here, of course. Okay, well basically I have a G note here on fret 8. Now all I have to do is find the D note on the G string and I have one just here on fret 7. And there you go, now we have this. And we have this. If I do the same thing, I'll get the third shape here with my index on fret 10 and my other uh, fingers on fret 12. You can do it like that or like that. It doesn't matter. All right. Well, imagine you have a chord progression and we find the shapes for all the other chords. 
Now what I can do is play those triads one after another in the same area of the fretboard. Uh, therefore I'll be doing the minimal movement, the minimal possible movement. And this is called uh, voice leading, which we will get into later on. So imagine I have a progression that is G major and A minor. How do I find the, the shapes of the A minor? Well, basically I can go from the major shape and flatten the third. I take the major shapes and I flatten the third. So in this case of a GBD, what is my third? It's the B note. Then I need to flatten the B note. I need to do it B flat in order to get a G minor shape. Well, basically in the first shape here, that's my B note. If I flatten it, I get the G minor like that. In the second shape, that's my B note. If I flatten it, I get this shape. And in the last position, this is the shape I get. Now, of course, these shapes are movable, meaning if I move up my G chord two frets, I get an A chord. If I go down two frets, I get an F chord. So these shapes are movable just like anything else we do on the guitar, which is amazing because now all you have to memorize on those first three strings are three shapes for the major and three shapes for the minor. All right. So imagine I have a progression of G major and A minor. All I have to do is find my A minor that is next to this one. I have this. All right. So. And here, and here, awesome, okay, so needless to say, I have the diagrams for you, but I always prefer that you do the work yourself first before you try and look at the diagrams because at the end of the day we're doing all of that in order not to look at diagrams anymore however i'm giving you the diagrams for the first three strings and the second three strings which are b g and d okay so you you will get different shapes over there also if you have the stamina and patience to do that i'd rather you also do uh, to find the shapes on the B, G, and D strings for the major triads and the minor triads. We also have six shapes in total. All right, so don't forget to read the PDF lesson alongside this video. Also, try to work on your chord progressions and find them all throughout the fretboard and find every possible combination you could do with those chords uh, using the first three strings and the second three, three strings. Okay. Um, I will not give you the answers in this video, I'll give it to you in another video because I want you to really work on that yourself. Alright people, that's it for this lesson. Take your time to go through everything. Take your time, we are going to cover this again and again and we're gonna use everything we've learned to make crazy chord progressions, crazy improvisation, crazy chords and all of that. I'll see you in the next lesson.